Hi, it's Pavel with a C Sharp homework from uh, C Sharp 2012 How to Program book and Chapter 6, Exercise 17. And we are supposed to calculate some sales. Um, the company sells uh, three products product 1 for 298, product 2 for 450, and product 3 for 998. And we have to write an app that reads a series of pairs of numbers as follows. A product number and quantity sold. Now, we should use some switch statement to, statement to de determine the retail price for each product. And uh, we should calculate and display the total retail value of all products sold. We use a sentinel control loop to determine when uh, the app should stop looping and display the final results, which basically means the user will enter a certain value or will be entering numbers until the user enters a certain number or a certain value and then the loop stops. All right, now, in this case, uh, I'm going to do what they want, but I'm going to do it with a little, a little differently. I'm going to use uh, some lists and uh, that's because I can store everything in one file in one variable of lists you know so they I can store all the prices in one list and I can store the uh, totals of, of sales for each product in just one list instead of having all these variables one for each product one for each total and so forth so uh, this may be um, maybe a little advanced for uh, for you if you know you're not familiar with lists. If you are, then this is a breeze. All right. So but that's how I'm gonna do it. So uh, let's let's start. Like I said, we'll start with the list, and I'll store the, the uh, list of doubles of the price of each product. So it equals new list. New list of doubles, and I will initialize it with the with the prices. So it's 298, 450, and 998. So it's uh, 298, uh, 450, and 998. Was it? Let me check. 998. Yes. Okay. So this this variable of price holds all our prices. In a list and the other list will be another doubles list of doubles and it will be total and it will hold the totals for each of the product remember this is product one product two product three so we'll need three totals and it's going to be list of doubles and it will have three elements because we have three products and for now it will gonna be initialized with zero so at the beginning the total sales for each product is zero now uh, now we need variables to store the user input we need the quantity remember we're supposed to calculate the total sales which would be the quantity times the price for each product so uh, let's do that the enter quantity this is something that the user will enter for each product and we need to know, you know, what product we are uh, using on, what, in order to know how what calculations to do. Like, uh, are we using the first one for 298, or second one for 450, or the third one? So we need uh, the user to ask him to enter the the product number, which would be one, two, or three. Product one, two, or three, right? So uh, I'll call this user product number is long but fairly descriptive I hope so this is something that the user will enter for each product now remember he can enter as many products as he wishes uh, we, will, we will not limit it to any particular uh, number of products I mean we have three products but the loop will be pretty much unlimited as long as the user wants to keep entering the product numbers we will you know, perform the calculations that's what they want us to uh, do you know using the 
sentinel control loop. So what it basically means that we will loop while and this is kind of arbitrary so I will simply use while quantity not equals negative one so once the user enters negative one for quantity the loop stops and we will display the results so this is our main loop so and with each iteration we will ask the user to input the um, the quantity so console dot right line please enter quantity and we can ask him also for the product number uh, simply because uh, ah, yeah let's do that and uh, he will enter it all at once instead of asking please enter quantity and then ask please enter product number we will ask it all in one please enter the quantity and product number uh, or enter negative one to quit all right now the product numbers we have them here product one product two product three so actually over here we can do just so the user knows what the product numbers are one two or three those are our product numbers and over here we will first do the quantity or catch the quantity and put it in our quantity variable but it's an integer so we have to convert it to integer console dot read line So that's our quantity uh, and our user product number equals convert to uh, program number is integer so product number uh, convert to integer console dot read line so basically user will enter two numbers one will be the quantity and the second one will be the uh, product number now we can use the switch statement to determine which product number what would what the price what uh, to use so our switch quantity no not quantity the user product number that's what we are determining if the product number is one then the price is 298 product number is 2 then it's 450 and 3 998 so uh, our case 1 that's the product number 1 this is not just case 1 2 3 or so this is the, this one equals this variable value the value in this variable so case 1 we could you know we could have product numbers uh, starting like 10 20 or 30 uh, you know and then the, the case will be ten, case 10 not case 1 in other words just this is gonna be in order case 1 to case 2 case 3 but don't let it confuse you it's not uh, you know this number is not an arbitrary number this is actual value of the user product number uh, so case 1 in this case is a uh, total remember we are using the list so uh, In element of zero plus equals price and element add zero times quantity all right so what did I do here now uh, let me do the break here like that if this is product number one then a total this total this particular zero will now equals to price element at zero which is 298 times the quantity which is what the user entered and it will be stored in this element if case is two then I can just copy this total one this element here will be element at, uh, uh, in price list which is this one element at one which is 450 
times quantity, and finally, uh, case three, total, which is the last one over here, will now equal 998 times quantity. This is zero based, so this is element zero, element one, and element two, just like this, element zero, element one, element two. All right, so uh, that's our case statement. Uh, you, could, you could always use a default just to, you know, catch any unexpected errors. We shouldn't have any unexpected errors. Well, we could actually, because we uh, if, what if he enters, uh, you know, product number four, there is no such uh, product number. So if that's the case, console that uh, right line, you entered incorrect product number. And uh, we ask for another input. But not here, uh, we, will, we will simply break out of it. Because once this is displayed, the switch is over, it goes over here again, and it displays, please enter quantity one, two, three. If I entered it here again, like please enter the quantity, it would display twice. It would display it over here, and then it would go and display it over here. Remember, it's a loop. It just keeps going and going. All right, so once uh, all the numbers are entered and the user enters negative one, we got off to, uh, out of the loop and we will display the, the results. So console dot right line, uh, total sales for product one are, and I will do it uh, with the placeholders uh, like that. And a new line after that. Okay, and the placeholder will be um, what is it going to be? It's going to be whatever is stored in our list of total in this element. This is product one. So whatever total that element at zero. All right. And our product two, and this is really also product three. So total, I know what I'll make it capital, just to make it prettier. So total sales for product two are stored in our total of elements one, and totals of product three, total sales of product three are element two. Okay, I'll do a uh, console console that line to display the output and let's test it. All right, so it asks us please enter quantity uh, and product number. So I'll enter quantity of 10 for product number one, and 20 for product number two, and 30 for product number three, and then I'll enter another 10 for product number one, and that's enough. I'll enter negative one, and it should get off out of the loop. And it's not, oh, we're getting get an exception here. Input string was not in correct format. Let's see, so I entered negative one for the quantity. Okay, so I entered negative one for the quantity, but it still expect product number. So I pressed enter only, uh, so it's like, a, you know, it's not a value. It's not, an, it cannot be converted to integer, so it gave me an error. In other words, when I enter negative one, I cannot ask for any uh, product number. So the options we have here are to separate this, in other words, to have please enter quantity, and then on a separate line, please enter product number. Or we can do this, uh, a little if statement. Right, uh, 
So user enters quantity right here and over here before we enter product number will be if quantity equals so negative one. No, in fact, if quantity not equals negative one, then we'll do all this. Uh, what did I miss? So user enters quantity. If it's not negative one, then we'll ask for the product number, and then we'll do the uh, calculations. If this is quantity negative one, all this is skipped. It goes to the while. It checks the quantity. Quantity not equal to negative one. It's false. It does equal negative one. So it skips everything and it goes straight to the output. All right. So let's test that. Okay, so uh, please enter quantity. Again, I'll enter 10, product number one, 20 for product number two, 30 for product number three, and then another 10 for product number one. That's what we had last time. And I will enter negative one to quit the loop. And it did quit the loop. It didn't ask for any product number or anything. All right, so we have a, let me get a calculator. Uh, just to double check that the calculations are correct. So we have 10 and 10 of product number one. So that's 20 times 298. And total is 5960, which is correct. And uh, we have uh, 20 times 450. That's for product number two. That's 90. And 998, which is product number three, times uh, we had 30, 30 for the quantity at 299. For so that's working correctly, but I'm going to format it in uh, for currency. So over here, I will do instead of number, I will do currency and uh, currency two with two decimal uh, two decimal points. Just a quick test. Uh, one to ten. Product like one, 20, product like two, 30, product like three, and that's enough. And now you have, and now we have it formatted with dollar sign in front of it with two decimal points. Now let me test the, uh, whether, what's gonna happen if I enter the wrong uh, product number. So I'll, I'll enter correct one first. Oh no, I entered, uh, it asked for the quantity, quantity is, I entered it wrong. In other words, I tried to enter 10 as a product number, which is wrong. So it simply told me you enter incorrect product number. I'll try another uh, uh, wrong product number. And uh, the quantity would be, let's say 10 and product number 50, which is wrong. You enter incorrect product number. So now I enter 10 and product number one, and that's correct. And it asks me for the next one. So let's, I'll do a wrong one again, uh, product number 50. Uh, wrong number. So it, it seems to be working fine. If I do 10, that's correct. And if I do 20 for product number 50 again, wrong number, it gets, tells me that it's wrong. So uh, it seems to be working fine. We got the calculations. It says total sales for product 3 are 0. That's because I did not enter any for product 3. If you look at it, I enter 10. 50, then 1, then 50, then 2, then 50, and then 1. So it even calculate, it even knows that it's 0 because we have it initialized at 0. Okay, so it wasn't so bad, right? Uh, I hope it helped you, and I'll see you next time. Take care.